Leukaemia and Blood Foundation is dedicated to supporting patients, their family, whānau and friends through a diagnosis of a blood cancer or condition. This short film has been put together to help you understand the impact of this diagnosis on you and your loved ones. We hope you find it helpful. Uh, it never occurred to me to think why me and I've no idea why. I was always positive, always believed in myself that I wasn't going to die of cancer. So I was certainly scared of what the treatments might bring when, I, when they came through, but um, I didn't necessarily think I was going to die. The reactions vary enormously, as do the, the diseases that we're uh, dealing with. Uh, they range from very benign diseases that we don't need to treat often for many years to life-threatening diseases that are going to require intensive treatment and many months in hospital. And so the reactions vary, and I think the reactions that people have with these diseases is a very individual thing, and there's no right reaction, there's no wrong reaction. Um, but it does range from uh, some people are overwhelmed by this, um, by having to confront issues like their own, possibly their own death, um, and some people seem relatively nonplussed by it. Some people are quite relieved because they've been unwell for some time and they've finally got an explanation as to why they've been unwell and you know, the, the fact that something can be done about it. When I was first diagnosed, I was 19, and they told me that the diagnosis was terminal. So it was a massive shock to the system, and uh, I never saw it coming. And, um, and then I started immediately wondering how I was going to explain it to my family. So uh, it took me a long time to get to grips with what had been said and to start to understand, you know, what the implications might be. I think information is the key to dealing with this and I think that in the old days you know, people got a serious illness, the doctors used to pat them on the heads and say it'll be alright we'll look after this and I think that's completely inappropriate for, for, for most uh, uh, blood cancers. There's no such thing as too much information, however people differ in how much information they want. Some people don't want to know everything. I generally say, well, you can close your ears, I'm going to tell you as much as I know, but I'm not going to labour the point if you don't want information. Some people say, I want to just do what you say, doctor. Other people want to know everything we're doing and the justification for it, and there's no right way of approaching this. Uh, but sometimes if people don't want too much information, then that's fine. One thing which I warn people about is that the treatment of these conditions is actually very complicated, and they sometimes get conflicting information. Uh, this is not that uncommon. They may get a different story from the nurse who looks after them overnight, from the junior doctor in the morning, a uh, different story from the consultant on the ward round. And I think if there is confusion or conflicting information, then discussing that and clarifying that is very important. I think there's no such thing as too much knowledge. I think you know the, the more people understand about the treatment, some of the treatments we recommend involve very intensive chemotherapy and weeks, months in hospital and potentially a number of side effects and problems and risks associated with that treatment and for people to to cope with that process they need to be part of the decision making and they need to have buy-in into that process and, and that requires information and knowledge about the disease. So the more information the better. I think that one of the problems with being diagnosed with a disease like this is a sense of powerlessness, a sense of loss of control because a lot of things happen which over which the person with the disease has little control. But there are some things that can be done. As I say, I think knowing and understanding the disease, understanding the principles behind the treatments, understanding the, the risk of complications and, and side effects and what we can do to minimise those uh, is important. I think that obviously with the internet there's, there's a lot of information out there and people are often come to us armed with information from the internet. I think that's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. And the key thing with information from the internet is knowing how good the information is and what the source of it is. I think it's important that you, that patients do do that. I, I don't think we're never going to say don't go and get information. If the information is conflicting or different from what the doctors and nurses and other health professionals looking after patients says, or are saying, if, if there's a conflict, it's, it's good to have that in the open and discuss it. We have some idea of what are reputable sites on the internet. We, you know, people bring me information and they say it's 
on the internet I found this and I said well that's good because that's a that's a very reputable site and and they they talk sense sometimes I said that just doesn't look right to me I, I've, no, I've no evidence to support this